Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create your own custom default swatches for Illustrator. This will allow you to open a new document in Illustrator and automatically have the swatches panel configured exactly the way you want it to look. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what we're trying to achieve. I'm going to choose File New here and I have some profiles already created. I'm just going to this one. I'm just going to click OK. Now what it does in addition to creating a document of a fixed size is it already creates for me the swatches that I want to use. And so we're going to see how we could create a document profile that we can use that will give us the swatches that we want. Now I'm just going to get rid of this document and let's start with a brand new document. I'm going to choose File New and I'm going to choose the basic web one because that sets up most of what I want. But I can set my own width and height. I want my default size to be 1000 by 500 but I can make this points or pixels whatever I want it to be. I've just set it to points. I want it to be a landscape orientation. I want my color mode to be RGB but let's say for argument's sake I want 150 ppi. So I'm just going to set this up with just one artboard and this is going to be what I want my new documents to look like. So just click OK. And now, not unsurprisingly, it comes in with this set of preset swatches, none of which I want beyond sort of black and white. So I'm going to click on the first swatch and I'm going to shift click on the last one so I have all of these selected and I'm just going to drag and drop them into the trash can. So now I have a document that only has two colors and the none in it. Now I have cooler open so I'm just going to go to cooler because I have some nice little color schemes in here that I'd like to use to add to my basic swatches. So these are going to be the colors that I have available to me all of the time because these are the kind of colors that I like to use. So here is a swatch here. I'm just going to add it to my swatches palette and then there's a second one here, tech office. I kind of like that and let's go and add for argument's sake just for today this third set and let's say that these are all the swatches that I normally want to see. So I'm just going to close cooler down for a minute. Let's make these a little bit bigger and I can rearrange them. So I could actually go in and arrange these in color order. So I might organize them so that they're a little bit easier for me to identify. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could adjust some of these colors too. Now, this looks like white, which it is, so I don't need a second lot of white. So I'm just going to trash that. And let's just finish off with this. So there are my colors. I'm just going to get rid of these color groups because I don't need them any longer. Now, if I wanted these colors to be global colors, for example, so that when I use them in a document, if I change the color, then the color would be changed everywhere where it was inserted into the document. I could do that as well. To make these global colors, I'm just going to select the first and shift click on the last. And then I'm going to click the swatch options here to open that. And I'm going to set these so that they are all global color. So I'll click OK and then they get this little triangle across the bottom to indicate that they're global colors. Now that I've done that, I'm ready to save my document. There are other things that I could create for this profile, but basically today all I want is the document size and the swatches. So I'm going to choose File and then Save As. And I want to save this in a specific location. What I want to do is to drop it into my user area on a Windows machine. It's going into App Data and then Roaming and then Adobe. And I want to pick up my Illustrator version. Now, in this case, I'm using Illustrator CC, which is Illustrator 17. But if you were using an earlier version, you would drop it into the appropriate folder for the version of Illustrator that you're using. I'll double click here, English US x64 
and it's going into new document profiles and I'm going to call this Helen Swatches and that's going to be the profile I'm going to ask for later on so I'll click Save and I'll just finish off with the OK here. Now we'll close that document down and let's see how we would go ahead and create a new document using that profile so that we would have those swatches available to us. File and then New. From this profile list I'm going to choose Helen Swatches. You can see that the document has one artboard, the width and height are as we requested, so too is the orientation, color mode and raster effect settings. I'll click OK. Here's my document and here is my global color swatches palette. Everything is as I set it up to be. Of course if I ever wanted to go back to the sort of illustrated defaults, I'll just choose File and New and instead of Helen Swatches I could just bring up a new web document, change the size if I wanted to and the raster effects if I wanted to and click OK. And here it is, this is the old Swatches palette that you're used to seeing in Illustrator. So you have a choice and the choice is determined when you create a new document by choosing File New, determine which profile you want to use and you can create different profiles for different types of tasks. I have one here for SF Designs. Click OK. This is the profile for that document. It has a number of swatches. They're not global process colors but they're just regular colors. That's the way I want them to look for a particular project. Then I have that already configured. So there's how you can create your own color swatches custom for each document and just make starting a new document just that little bit easier in Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my video and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.